get out of the way. A lot of times stuff gets done that wouldn't get done if you're in the way. Uh, but I was available to help as best I could. Uh, the, the, the flyer that went out said that I would talk about, you know, what's been going on and where I think things are gonna go next year uh, or next session uh, in there. And with your help, I'll be there doing some stuff. I think what we have to concentrate on is the idea that why change something or why fix it when it ain't broke? The evidence is very, very clear that all of the initiatives we have taken since I've been in the General Assembly and starting one year before that when we took the, when we, the conservatives took the majority in both chambers of the General Assembly have all come out positive. I don't think anyone in their right mind wants to argue the economic success that we've been. Uh, and it's accelerating now as, as more and more of the programs take hold and, and we move forward. Uh, it, it amounted really in, in, in essence to the first thing you, I can't create jobs if a politician, you know, if you hear one say they're gonna create jobs, go vote for the other guy. No politician alive can create a job unless he happens to own a business at the same time, then maybe he gets part of that equation. For the most part, uh, the, the environment that's created by legislation sets things in motion that will, however, create jobs. Our success rate has been in the somewhere, the estimates run between three and 400,000 new jobs since 2013. And that's pretty darn good when you compare it to the national averages and so forth. So what I expect is going to happen next year is the six things that I usually talk about, uh, that's what's going to push the, the economic, you know, the jobs in the economy and the education and the quality of life paradigm that we, that we move by. We're going to continue to lower taxes. We've taken the taxes, both personal and corporate, uh, from exorbitant levels when we took charge of spread. Uh, in 2011 was from 7.25 or 7.75 to 6.25. It's now at 5.8 and going to 5.5 at the end of this year at the next tax break. <laughs> Corporate started out at 6.5, someplace around in there. We've now dropped it to three. And it's going to get cut again in the next cycle when we go back. This all assumes that the same team will go back to do the same kind of things. At the same time, you have to realize, uh, you know, people will throw at us, well, you're really raising taxes because you're moving on into the sales tax changes. You can't run a government without revenue. The trick is to take the revenue off burden off of the shoulders of taxpayers like us, uh, put more money in your pockets to spend and more money in the businesses so they can expand and get everybody to do what the great Hillary says, paying their fair share. If you're gonna buy something, we all pay the same level of tax. What could be more fair than that? Uh, I, I can get all, you know, going pretty much on, well, my tax, I should pay more than somebody else because they have less. No, it doesn't work that way. Uh, if it's fair, it's fair and it's level and it's even. So we had to move in and uh, expand the sales tax base to make up for the change to the personal and corporate income tax. And because of the way we did that, uh, we've had a couple of years of moving in that direction. Uh, we actually had a $400 million or so uh, revenue surplus that we weren't expecting come in this year, which we immediately put into what liberals don't really like called rainy day fund. They'd rather spend it before they get it. Uh, we put it into this rainy day fund, and lo and behold, with Matthew hitting, it's there for disasters. This was a disaster. That money is available. We won't have to raise taxes. We won't have to borrow money. We won't have to depend on anybody to fix the damage that's occurring because we did that. And it'll be replenished. There's a law in the books that says certain levels of uh, uh, $2.3 billion, I believe, is, is what the top limit is on that fund, but it's there, and we've gone from deficit to uh, being in the black in that regard, and we were able to put that money aside. In addition to the tax question, you have to kind of look at, 
control spending. The only government that I know of, uh, well, there's a lot of governments, but the one that I know of best that can just continue to spend money without regard to where it comes from is our own federal government, which just prints it. There's nothing behind that money, they just print it. We can't do that, we have to live on a balanced budget. That by law we have to do that, so revenues can, can have to equal outputs, uh, and that's just the way we have to live. So we control the spending rather than squandering the dollars that we get and set up so that we now have a very, very sound triple A rating uh, for, our, for any bond companies or, or things of that nature. We're in really good, solid shape because of controlled spending rather than just borrowing money. And the third part of that equation that puts the business-friendly environment uh, in action ends up being, well, let's have less regulations. We have either modified or done away with, since I've been there, about 600 regulations that were stifling the business growth, trying to make it more streamlined, and we're gonna to continue to do that. All three of those things are gonna continue in the next session. Uh, with your help and the folks out there, I'll be part of that going on. Now, there are other parts that go into this equation, and the, the next, these aren't in priority, don't misunderstand me. If you spend 57% of your income on one thing, that's gotta tell the world what your priority is in your life, correct? The state of North Carolina spends 57% of its income, of its revenues, on education. Now that's a little bit different than some of the numbers you hear, but it's the dead on 57% goes to education. We can only in the legislature sort of say, here are the dollars, here's how we think you might want to spend it, but we give great latitude to the LEAs uh, and unfortunately to DPI, the, the Superintendent of Public Instruction, uh, in, in how it's spent. And a lot of it doesn't go where it's supposed to go. We know that, it's just hard to pin down. Uh, the next thing that we do in the education world, in addition to just the 57%, if you just took the next line item, if you went and cut these things up a little bit and sliced and diced them, the number one expenditure in the state of North Carolina that comes from that is 39% go through K, go to K through 12. You know, those are cold hard facts, folks, that the disinformation that's out there is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, we've done a lot with uh, education and trying to uh, set in some uh, milestones, things you have to make. Why can't people be responsible for making certain objective goals in order to prove that what they're doing is doing good? Uh, to me, that's just a normal way of doing business. To some people, that's a confronted sort of a thing that we would actually keep track of where our dollars are going and is it being properly, are they being properly utilized? Everybody knows we have done uh, I think a great job on taking care of the teacher pay. How many people in this room's total compensation package is a little over $65,000 a year? Total compensation, how many? Are you a teacher? The, the average teacher compensation in, in 2016, salary plus benefits, $65,000. We are not at the bottom of the heap the way the press wants you to think, or the way the uh, NCAA wants you to think. It's just not true. But it goes back to the control of spending. You can't just give more money away. If you take that 57% that, that we started with, add 24% that goes to Medicaid, what have you got left? 19%, because I didn't go to Common Core. I understand that's arithmetic. Uh, it's true. Uh, thank you. Let's try to slip that one in. Yeah. But when you do that, you understand that of all of the revenues in the state, only 19% are available to run the rest of the state government. Now, if you want to put more into education, I don't have any problem with it. I'm not saying the 57% is enough. 
I'm saying it's what's affordable. They're not always the same kind of a thing. If you want to put more into it, do you want me to cut Medicaid? I don't think so. How about if I cut DOT again or things like that? Uh, as a side issue, one of the things that comes up quite frequently in the education world is the educational lottery. After all is said and done and all the money comes in and it's all put out to where it has to be, roughly four and a half million dollars a year is, is all that the lottery can give to education by the time they pay their expenses, pay the winners what they're earning. You know, if nobody wins in the lottery, who's gonna buy it? So that has to be a fairly high percentage, like it's around 65% of all the lottery monies that are spent goes back in the form of prize money, okay? Uh, the next biggest thing at around 24.5% is education. And that comes to about, in 2016, somewhere around $450 million. Uh, it's, uh, it's not what people expected it to be in, in terms of size, but it explains why there's not more money available. It, they're just, it's part of, of being, constrained in how you spend. Anyhow, we're doing, I think, great things in education and we're gonna to continue to do that. Uh, the one initiative that I'm gonna go into, Martha, just so you know, is I'm dead, I'm dead I might not win. I, I make the three promises, I listen and I try. I just can't guarantee outcomes. I am tired of hearing people say that at the crux of the issue of workforce readiness, for all these new businesses that want to come in or develop is a community college and then cut community college money. Does that make sense to anybody in this room? No, 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 no. not to me. I have told Dr. Marshawn and I've told Dr. Johnson over in Johnston County, I, I can't guarantee what will happen, but I know darn well what I'm gonna say when I get in caucus on this subject. Uh, it's kind of like in the military world. Uh, how many, anybody in here military retired besides me? I, we are the most military friendly state in the United States of America, right? That's, 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 what, McCrory, that's what McCrory says. So I'm gonna walk in and say, hey Gov, let me ask you a question here. If we're the most military friendly state, how, and you wanna keep military people here, that's part of the line. We want to keep them here, they're good citizens, they got, they're smart, they're, they have skills, we want to keep them in the state. When a person gets out at Bragg and he signs, uh, he's done, he's moving